Hello there, welcome back to The Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Today I am using Gothorum Tonstrina, I probably did not pronounce right. Uh, this is by Southern Witchcrafts. This is a uh, exclusive to the Razor Company. Uh, you know, the Razor Company's worked with a couple different soap frames to have some exclusive scents for their store. And this happens to be the one from Southern Witchcrafts. Um, got a soap and a splash set. They also make an EDP. I've not been able to uh, get a hold of that yet. They haven't released the EDP in a while. so. Uh, the scent is really nice. Patchouli, bergamot, sandalwood, lavender, basil, and musk. If you've never used Southern Witchcrafts, their scents are different than everyone else's. They are very much their own thing, doing their own thing. Um, they really stand out in the scent department. Um, I will say, I haven't tried all of their stuff. I've had three, I think, scents from them. Um, some of them can be challenging. They definitely go outside the box with a lot of stuff. This one is different. I mean, you think of like patchouli, bergamot, sandalwood, lavender, basil, and musk. Like you, you read those and you're like, oh, that's a standard barbershop scent, which is what this is kind of touting itself to be. But then it's got that gothorm, that kind of undead kind of, you know, barbershop. It's different. And I don't know how they did it, but it's, it's very dry. Like I would think these scents would be, like sandalwood is kind of a very soft, Kind of alive it's that tree resin kind of scent it's usually very soft and sweet there's no real sweetness to this it doesn't smell bad at all in any way it's an, you can kind of smell a sandalwood and it kind of works with everything else but it's just it's got this kind of like dry desiccated kind of feel to it that you wouldn't normally get with the barbershop like it fits with the gothorum kind of artwork and the, and the idea it works. It works really well for that kind of motif. Kind of a dry, graveyardy kind of scent. It's really nice. It's cool. I like it. Um, but, you know, not for the faint of heart. Uh, I got it all whipped up here with my um, chisel and hound brush, the Bodhi Knot. This is a vegan base soap if you've never used it before. Um, I'm going to put some more water on my face real quick. I do have some pre-shave on my face as well. I just wanted to have a little base of water as well. Uh, this Badger pre-shave I've been using the last little bit here. I like it. Uh, like I was saying, this is a, a vegan base. I like it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have a preference really between tallow and vegan bases. I know some people have some very strong feelings about that. I, I don't. I mean, there's plenty of tallow based soaps I like. I like vegan soaps as well. Some of them I tried, and some of them aren't great, but I've also tried tallow soaps that aren't great. So I don't really think that being vegan by nature like makes it a hard start or anything. It's like I don't think having tallow in your soap base automatically magically gives you a good soap because I've used plenty of tallow based soaps and they weren't that great. I don't have any issues lathering this. I, everyone's got their own. I don't know. I don't know why everyone's got their own opinion on on vegan versus tallow. Um, I mean, vegan soaps have been around forever. This isn't a new thing. I know, like the veganism movement is kind of big, but like having a vegan soap is, is nothing new. I mean, they've been making vegan soaps in like Italy for like a hundred years or some shit. Like Martin de Condre has been around forever, using the exact same formula for as long as they've been open, which is longer than I've been alive. And they're a vegan base soap, and they work just fine. I do think it kind of, some of the, the cheaper, no name kind of glycerin soaps and stuff that kind of came out, or that are out there um, and widely available. They're, a lot of them are palm based, which makes it vegan, and people like to have that vegan label. So some of these like really cheap kind of soaps that people see when they're looking on Amazon or something get out there and then that might give a bad name to the vegan soap base and, and as a whole because those are the only soaps that people are familiar with is these kind of like cheap crappy ones but there are good ones out there and this is fantastic. For the razor I'm using the Yaki Harlequin. This is uh, from obviously from Yaki from China. 
Um, I borrowed this from Scott, or he sent it over to me to try. Uh, this has got the cool, like, Goodwill style head. If you're familiar with the Gillette Goodwill. So it's got these diamond shaped posts and they fit into the head. So there are several Goodwill styles that, that came out back then. And this was like obviously one of the more sought after ones that had the base plate diamonds that went through to the top caps because it looks cool and it had this kind of very similar design. Um, I've got two Goodwills and neither of them look like this. They look like they're just a plain brass smooth top like any of the other news from that era. Um, but underneath on the base plate it has those triangular um, blade holders and then there's like a square kind of opening on the bottom of the base plate that you can't see that kind of holds them. They actually don't do a very good job holding the, the blade steady. It's got a lot of play in those razors. Uh, but anyway, this one does not. It covers the blade tab fully. Um, it's got an open tooth design. It's kind of like a, it looks to me like a combination of like the new deluxe and the the Goodwill, obviously it's got that Goodwill design on the head. Sorry about that, I didn't realize it was getting all blurry on me. But it's got like the, the open tooth design of like the new Deluxe, kind of like the flat bottom like the new Deluxe. It's interesting. This is obviously a Darwin-esque uh, handle design. If you're not familiar with the Darwin, it's a uh, UK made razor, uh, made out of cobalt steel. Very hard to find, very expensive. Um, obviously a lot of companies make the Darwin style handles. There's, I think this goes for 47 bucks on AliExpress, uh, stainless steel. And the handle you'd buy separately, they have a lot of actually good handles out there. I've got a new Schick made in Germany blade loaded up in here. I had a couple days growth. Scott's been dying to get my opinion on this razor. I haven't been like putting it off per se, but. Definitely has some blade feel. Uh, Scott compared it to, I think the new Deluxe. But it had that kind of blade feel. I haven't used my new Deluxe in a while. So I can't make an honest comparison between those two at this moment. can't quite find the angle that I think works best. It's got a pretty wide angle of view. And I was using it pretty right in the, the guard. Or even right the cap. I can't figure out which one I like better though. I think right in the cap smooths it out just a little bit. can't decide if I like it or not. I mean, it's not, I think the, the amount of blade feels a little high for me. Nah, I don't know if that's it. I don't know if it's a blade feel necessarily. Maybe it's like the angle, the geometry of the blade. It doesn't look like anything outrageous or, I don't know, feels weird. I think it's, I don't know how it's gonna go for the, uh, the against the grain. 
It's very securely held. I mean, those diamond shaped ones they have on there are obviously machined really well. And there's not really any blade play at all once you get the blade loaded on there. Not to mention once you get it, you know, tightened down onto the top cap. And it seems like a very nice design. I mean, it's got blade clamping top and bottom pretty close to the blade edge. Um, but for some reason, I don't know. It's not chattery, but for some reason that feeling is kind of there for me. Maybe it's just blade fill. Maybe it's just got more blade fill than I've been used to using recently. It is not the most comfortable razor I've ever used. I, yeah, it's kind of, it is a blade feel. I don't know, I constantly feel like I'm gonna cut myself. And it doesn't have like a lot of blade exposure. At least I don't think, I mean, it doesn't look like it has a lot of blade exposure. It just looks pretty normal. Something about that angle though. Like sometimes you're like, oh, that's pretty smooth. And then another time I feel like, man, if I make like the slightest misstep, I'm gonna open my chin up from like ear to chin, just like this long cut. I feel like it's imminent. Luckily, I haven't nicked myself yet. Soap's doing an outstanding job, though. Super slick. Lots of cushion. My skin feels great insofar as, you know, how the soap's making it feel. Not how the blade's making it feel. I do like this scent. I do wish I could get the EDP. Every once in a while I look on TRC, they do like a restock of the, the soap and splash and they order from Sun and Witchcraft every so often. And uh, they haven't restocked the EDP in a while. Or at least they have, I keep missing it every time it happens. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I just looked. I don't even think it had an EDP listed. I think it was just the soap and splash. Maybe they stopped making it. I know it exists, I've seen it. I never see it for sale. <laughs> it's okay, not great. And it's pretty efficient. I would hope so for the Blade fill I'm getting.
All right, I got my stuff right there. Little, little tiny leaper. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty razor. I assume it's just the blade feels too much for me. Everything else is nice about it. It just doesn't, it's not comfortable. Looking at it, I would never have guessed it'd be, it would have a little blade feel like this. I don't think it's, I've used plenty of open cones. I don't think it's just that. I don't know if it's the geometry of the blade. It doesn't have like an over, like the blade exposure is not anything to note. The blade gap isn't anything to note. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's not. You can look at a razor and be like, wow, that's a big blade gap, but it's not. It's not anything crazy. I've tried different angles, like writing it steep, which sometimes works for like the Rex, the Ambassador, that tends to help smooth it out a little bit. Didn't help this. Tried writing the cap, helps a little bit. really like skips right here too. I, I get that I have coarse for hair right here. Sometimes an issue which is why I've been cutting myself on my chin but not a great feeling. All right, not my favorite shave. That wasn't great. I mean, like I didn't cut myself too much. I got, you know, I got one right here. But other than that, maybe, maybe one right there. I don't, it doesn't even feel that efficient. I still got some whiskers left. I mean, it's pretty efficient, but it's not like the bees knees. It's less efficient than the Ambassador still, but I, it was much less comfortable to use than the Ambassador. Anyways, I'm gonna do some quick touch-ups real quick with a different razor, and I'll be right back for a post-shave of my final thoughts. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. Got the matching Gothorum Tonstrina uh, splash here. They got uh, Witch Hazel Water Aloe Fragrance Vitamin E Glycerin and Polysorbate 20. Uh, so a non-alcohol based Splash is the witch hazel based. I say it's witch hazel based. There's no alcohol in it. Got kind of a milky, I don't know if you can quite see that. Pouring it out of my hand. Uh, a very white, kind of milky look to it, which is common. I don't know what that comes from actually, but I find it common in witch hazel based splashes. I don't know that it's a witch hazel because I use witch hazel and it's clear. I really want this EDP. One day I shall find it. So, that's a really nice splash. I, I wish they had alcohol in it just because I like that. Um, it helps with the scent. I had talked about before, uh, the scent's gonna last longer for alcohol piece. Um, and I kind of like the alcohol burn. Luckily there's no burn because it's witch hazel based. I did have some irritation, a couple little weepers. Um, I ended up, so I did a touch up after, you know, off camera. I used the, the the Overlander, so I wanted something a little bit, you know, smoother. And I ended up doing an entire fourth pass. Uh, it was just, I just kept finding more. And then went, you know, I touched up on my neck, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna touch up my chin a little bit, because I couldn't quite go against the grain on some spots with it. So I used the Overlander to get there. And then, and my cheeks still had a bunch of whiskers, so I did a whole other pass. I did a whole fourth pass, basically, is what I rolled out to, um, with the Overlander. It was just surprisingly, there's a lot of bleed feel, felt really efficient. Um, it definitely knocked down that first pass. Um, before, even though 
with all that efficiency and all that blade feel, I still had whiskers left and I, it wasn't very enjoyable for me. I mean, it's a nice looking razor. Um, I dig the Darwin handle. I have a couple of Darwin handles myself. Um, but yeah, I don't, I wouldn't buy one of these for myself personally. So it's, it's a non-recommend for me. If you like high blade feel uh, razors out there, then maybe this is for you. I just, I couldn't get into it. It wasn't, I don't know. I, I like the Rex. It's got high blade feel, but at least it has going for it that it's smooth and very, very efficient. And this is kind of like the worst of both worlds. It had a lot of blade feel, so it wasn't comfortable to use, and it wasn't as efficient as you would expect from those high blade feel razors, which is kind of an experience I get with most of them. Like I get like blade feel for the sake of blade feel. The geometry doesn't really work for it that well. Like the the footer for the future, however you, you pronounce it, I, I don't, I don't have one. I've used one. I have like one of the knockoffs, the Q-shaped clone. I have, I've used it once. Like, I just don't. I've used the the original uh, future, and I just don't doesn't work for me. It's just blade fill for, and it doesn't, there's a lot of blade chatter. It doesn't work for me. So I do got some weeper still. I'm gonna do some more cold water on there. Um, the splash is okay. My skin feels a little tacky afterwards, which I don't remember that being a thing, but it does feel a little tacky. And I wish that wasn't the case. I'm gonna put on some, uh, some post shape oil too, so that'll take care of that. It's interesting, but my skin doesn't feel for all the little weavers I got, it actually does feel pretty good, all things considered. Um, yeah, that's a shave. So, yes, no. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you like it or not in the comments. If you want to see something else, let me know. Hit me up in the comments, and I'll see you here next time.